Well, it sounds like the Pac-2 is going to be a legitimate conference for at least a year, and uh, they're going to have to get creative schedule-wise to make that happen. That's what we'll address in this video. Welcome into the channel. I am John Kurtz. Here on this channel, we're talking college football, college basketball, and conference realignment, all from a Big 12 angle. Please consider subscribing if you have not. Live shows on Wednesdays and Sundays, they are a blast. We've got a great community here. You do not want to miss those. So subscribe, click that bell so you know when it is that I'm going live. And if you want to support the channel, you can do so on Venmo at john kurtz 4 I have personally been rooting very hard for Oregon State and Washington State in this legal battle that they are locked up against the rest, the outgoing members of the Pac-12. I really want Oregon State and Washington State to get control of this war chest of money that is there, and uh, frankly, they should be entitled to that with everybody else leaving, but that's the crux of the legal issue. It may require them to eventually be a Pac-2 conference for just a year or two with an NCAA rule that would allow them to do that. Here's Ross Dellinger with the latest on where all of that stands. Ross Dellinger now of Yahoo Sports. Uh, his article says, while the teams march forward on the field, Oregon State and Washington State officials continue to explore their future off of it. Some of those plans remain murky, but the fog of uncertainty is beginning to clear. Barring something unforeseen, the two schools are expected to operate as a two-member conference at least for next year and have been in deep discussions with Mountain West officials over a one- or two-year scheduling alliance, a move that could eventually serve as a first step in a long-term partnership or even a merger with the league. Now that has been discussed a lot, potential merger or reverse merger where everybody from the Mountain West would go join the Pac-12 under that branding, which seems like a smart idea. There have been a number of scenarios thrown out along those lines. Back to the article, the scheduling proposals are being socialized among Mountain West administrators and feedback is expected soon from the league's presidents. Multiple officials who have reviewed the scheduling proposals spoke to Yahoo Sports. The league has proposed a wide variety of models. One version would have Oregon State and Washington State playing each other and playing eight Mountain West opponents in 2024. Another has them playing seven. One has their games counting toward conference records. Another has them as non-conference matchups. Which that, one has them counting toward conference records. So I guess everybody would be theoretically in the same conference next year or... At least it counts as a conference game to the Mountain West opponents. I was even a little dubious as to what exactly that means specifically. Uh, but another proposal has them as non-con matchups. Any scheduling alliance is likely to feature a compensation package and or long-term commitment from Oregon State and Washington State to the Mountain West built around the idea of eventual full membership. However, a decision from Oregon State and Washington State remains absent as they await the results of their legal fight with the 10 other members of the Pac-12 Ahead of a scheduled court hearing next month, the parties are in mediation in efforts to reach a resolution on control of the Pac-12 and its assets, which includes millions of dollars. That will determine a more clear course of action. And that's what sucks here, is that not only are Oregon State and Washington State feeling like they're in jeopardy of losing some of the money they should be entitled to being left over in the league, but they're also having to delay what exactly their conference membership is going to be, how their scheduling is going to go down in football next year, they would like it to be done by the time the transfer portal opens, which makes a ton of sense. Like, how are you going to sell a kid on coming to your school or not transferring if you don't even know who the hell it is you're going to be playing next year? So they are in a very unenviable position. Uh, from the article, in the meantime, Oregon State and Washington State are barreling toward at least a year as a two-school two conference while potentially assembling a football schedule built around a Mountain West partnership. If it seems complicated, it is. It's also important. Any such decision has national implications on the college football postseason. So there's a section here about the college football playoff, which, of course, right now operates under the format, once it expands, of six plus six. So you'd have six conference champions, the five power fives, one highest rated conference champion from the group of five, and then six at largest. But, of course, everybody now wants to change it to five plus seven. There's been some pushback from Mike Oresco of the AAC, as you would imagine. And it would need to get unanimous approval to happen in the next two years before the contract is up. The Pac-12 still gets a voice on that, and so does Mike Oresco, who has been vehemently against it. So that seems complicated the next couple of years. Uh, the article does mention the college football playoff decision makers, the conference commissioners, and their corresponding league presidents have yet to make such a change or even deeply discuss it. 
Uh, they're practicing patience and remaining, quote, respectful of Washington State and Oregon State's situation. That's according to SEC Commissioner Greg Sankey. But he also said, quote, we'll get to it and there will be a difference of opinions. Uh, Dellinger says the rub lies in the timing and goes over the next two years versus beyond that. It seems like 2026 and beyond, uh, there's really no way that you're going to have a six plus six at that point. Probably the best case scenario, the rest of us outside of the Big Ten and SEC can hope for is a five plus seven model. Oregon State Athletic Director Scott Barnes says we want fair consideration under a power five umbrella. We want access and distribution is important. We didn't put ourselves in this position. We'll continue to invest at a power five level. We have an expectation that we'll be able to discuss what access and distribution look like while creating our path forward. Makes sense. Fairly reasonable stance, uh, I feel like, in that. Um, while most believe that the two schools are in line to receive, while most believe that the two schools are in line to receive from the college football playoff their individual school distribution as a power five program. So, okay. $6 billion a piece is the annual payout that they are expected to get there. There is no guarantee of an automatic qualifying spot. If they remain a two school conference, Oregon state and Washington state may be considered independents within the college football playoff format and only eligible for at large berths. Uh, though such a decision has not been made, most believe that to be the expectation. So that would, I would think, effectively eliminate them from the playoff the next couple of years because even if they go unbeaten against this schedule that's being proposed of Mountain West schools, probably not going to get enough respect to actually make the playoff that way. Uh, for some, an unchanged playoff format is a non-starter. Granting one group of five champion an automatic berth is Quote, hard enough to explain, but it was a compromise, uh, Greg Sankey said, which this is the danger. You don't want to mess with Sankey too much on that because he is already compromising. Uh, he goes on to say, the system can't really justify that. If you displace the 11th best at-large team with an unranked team, the system can't explain itself. And that is in reference to the 6 plus 6 model if they were to go down that road. Uh, finally, close a little bit with the financials of this. Uh, the Pac-12 as a league has more than $100 million in revenue tied to its existence. Uh, the cash is from several different avenues, most notably men's basketball tournament units for the last six years. That's at least $50 million. Final two years of distribution from the Rose Bowl contract, which is about $40 million, And the Pac-12 network production equipment in space, which recently saw $30 million in renovations. Uh, control of those assets is what's at stake in this legal fight. The governance of the league is for now in limbo as the parties mediate ahead of the case's next hearing, which is set for November 14th in Whitman County, Washington Superior Court. If a settlement isn't reached by November 14th, the hearing is likely to determine voting rights and thus control of the Pac-12's cash haul. However, this legal fight could drag on for months, if not more than a year, experts say. Boy, and the uncertainty around the legal fight is delaying a decision from the two schools over their future. Uh, but a deadline looms. School leaders hope to have at least a resolution to the next football season by the time the transfer portal opens following the regular season. I mean, I certainly wish them the best. That is convoluted, and I hate hearing that legal experts think it could take over a year to fully resolve itself. Can we do something? Can we get it expedited a little bit? Like, get some express shipping here on a resolution for Oregon State and Washington State. Let's make it happen. Like, Amazon Prime, two days, get it done. Figure it out for them, and just let them take the damn money. The case is not going very well for the other 10, by the way. Uh, you can check my last live show video uh, for more information on that front. But hey, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so live on Wednesday and Sunday, talking about all this sort of thing, all from a Big 12 slant. That is the, the slant that you're going to get typically on this channel, college football, college basketball, and conference realignment. Uh, like the video if you can. That also helps me. Leave a comment whether you love me, hate me, agree, disagree. All of that stuff helps. And you can support the channel on Venmo at john-kurtz-4. Take care, and I will talk to you soon.